Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. We're glad to see all of y'all here this morning. And for those of you joining us online, we are glad to have you joining us this morning also. Um, a couple of announcements we have coming up. Um, this morning, right after the service, we um, are packing and delivering care packages for first responders. Um, that'll be up in the fellowship hall. So if you're able to stay after and help with that, um, we will be meeting up there. Um, you can see that we are starting back our Wednesday night activities this Wednesday in our upper parking lot. Um, we're going to have a church-wide kickoff party, so we hope that you can make it this Wednesday night. It'll be from 6 to 7 um, in the upper parking lot. And we are going to host a baby shower for Amanda Sims. Amanda's family is who we've moved into our Haven house following the flood. Um, so we're going to hold a baby shower for her, for a baby boy, um, on Sunday the 26th in the upper parking lot from noon to 1.30. Um, and we have a Project Agape update. We have extended the donation deadline, and um, also they're saying that we can um, have you all pack your own shoe boxes and bring those to donate, but if you would also like to just bring um, items or a donation money, then our church can help buy the supplies and pack those for you. If you are able, please include a $5 um, donation to help cover transportation costs for the boxes. Um, and you can see there are still several um, ways you can sign up to help for flood relief. Um, we are helping serve as hospitality hosts and serving dinner um, at the Crusoe Community Center on several different dates. So you can see that in your bulletin, and it will also be in our weekly email to sign up to help with those also. Um, so please take time to fill out your opportunity form and drop it in the basket on your way out this morning. Now, if you'll stand and join me in our call to worship. Holy God, as we gather this morning, we are distracted. Grant us focus. We are worried. Grant us peace. Our lives are cluttered. Grant us space. Our minds are racing. Slow us down. Our hands are clinging to so many things. May we release the many things of this world as we seek your kingdom. Amen. Um, now stand and join us in singing Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, and the words are in your insert. to gather together to worship, whether it is in person or online. I invite you to turn to those around you and greet each other with the peace of Christ. For those joining us online, peace of Christ be with you.
I invite you all to gather back in a uh, posture of worship. Um, and before we get into our scripture reading and the message for the day, I did want to take a moment to recognize that yesterday marked the 20th year anniversary of the terrorist attacks on the World Trade Center, the Pentagon, and the plane that was marked for the Capitol but crashed in that field in Pennsylvania. The attacks, as you know, changed our lives and launched our nation into war. We know that nearly 3,000 lives were lost and all of us were affected in some way by the actions of that day 20 years ago. I know those of us who were alive can remember where we were when it happened. It struck me just how old I am when my daughter said, my teacher was in first grade. And I thought, oh, wow. <laughs> I want us to take a moment to remember in our hearts that day and, and how it changed us. We remember that on that day, there were those who ran toward the danger. They did it to help, to save lives. And there were many who ran into danger who did not make it out, who did that at the cost of their own lives. John chapter 15, verse 12, Jesus says, this is my commandment, that you should love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for a friend. Every year on the anniversary of 9-11, we remember the first responders who gave so much, some who gave their lives on that day 20 years ago. And we give thanks for the first responders in our own congregation who continue to run towards danger. We have several of those people in our church, some who are here, some who are online. If you are a first responder, would you stand and you are here, would you stand so we can recognize you? Thank you. Will you pray with me? Creator God, we give you thanks even this day. Lord, we remember, we remember that day 20 years ago when our lives and our nation changed forever. We remember the lives that were lost. We remember the images, the hurt, the pain. And we remember and give thanks for the first responders who ran toward the danger, who gave of themselves in order to save others. Lord, we remember. And God, we give thanks to you for the first responders in our church, in our community, who continue to give of themselves. For those who willingly sacrifice of themselves in order to help others. Pour out your spirit on them, Lord. Lead and guide them, keep them safe in your care. And pour out your spirit on us. Give us, Lord, a spirit of unity. Help us, Lord, as your children, to lead lives of light, to set an example of what it means to live in this world as a Christian, reaching out in love and grace. We ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
So before we get to the scripture reading, I want to share a story with you. This is a story uh, told by a Lutheran minister named Janet Hunt. She tells the story about visiting with a church member who was not often in worship. This particular church member was not often in worship because she struggled and battled with severe anxiety. Her anxiety kept her at home and her anxiety had gotten to the point where she was afraid to leave the house. Her worries and her anxiety only intensified after the death of her husband several years prior to this visit. Her worries kept her up at night, leaving her exhausted during the day. I wonder if any of you are like me, where sometimes your worries keep you up at night and leave you exhausted during the day. During their visit, this church member and Reverend Hunt sat together, they talked, they prayed together, and several months went by after this visit where Reverend Hunt did not see much of this, of this woman until she received a phone call saying that this woman was in the emergency room at the local hospital. They were running tests. And by the time the Reverend Hunt re got to the hospital, it had been determined that this woman had a mass on her brain and she was being transferred by ambulance to a bigger regional hospital. Once she got there, they performed surgery to remove the mass from her brain. Several weeks following her surgery, Reverend Hunt went to the reha rehabilitation place where the woman was recovering. When Reverend Hunt walked into the room, the woman carefully stood up with the help of a walker. She threw open her arms and she exclaimed, Pastor, I'm not worried anymore. It is gone. Thankfully and miraculously, following her surgery to remove this mass from her brain, this woman had been relieved of her anxiety and her worry. It was a miracle, and it was a drastic change in her life. Now the question became, well, was there something inside of her brain that that mass was pressing against that caused her to worry so much? When they removed the mass, did that relieve something that was going on inside of her brain? Is that what took away the worry? Or was it the fact that she had undergone this major surgery and it put things into perspective? You know, if you can survive brain surgery, then it kind of makes everything else seem a little bit less worrisome, doesn't it? I have no way of knowing what it was exactly that changed this woman to make her stop worrying so much. But wouldn't it be nice if our worries went away? Wouldn't it make life so much more enjoyable if we did not have worries? The words that Jesus spoke in Matthew chapter 6 are beautiful ones that speak to us about worry. And our scripture is from Matthew chapter 6, starting with verse 25. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than the food and body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow, or, sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to the span of your life? 
Why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all of his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass in the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things, and indeed your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The words that Jesus speaks in Matthew chapter 6 are ones that I know I have heard and I have read over and over again. They are words that sometimes bring me great comfort. They are words that sometimes soothe my soul that is prone to worry. And at the same time, there are also words that sometimes when I read them, I want to say, really, God? Really? Don't worry? Are you kidding me? There is so much to worry about. And sometimes when I read these words, I think to myself, okay, you know, it's easy to say, don't worry about what you will eat or what you will drink or don't worry about what you will wear. It's easy to say those things. But at the same time, we are human beings living in the world and, and we have to eat. We have to wear clothes. Well, I guess we don't have to, but we really should wear clothes. There are many things to worry about, especially, it seems, today. We worry about the safety of our health. We worry about what will happen if we gather in large groups, especially without masks on. We worry, I worry, about sending my kids to school for a lot of reasons. I worry about what might or might not happen if I take certain actions or don't take certain actions. I worry about the future of our country. I worry about our church, honestly, a lot. That is something that keeps me up at night. I worry about, well, what's going to happen to our congregation in the midst of the coronavirus. I worry about all sorts of things. This afternoon, I'm heading into Crusoe, which, as you know, is the area that was most devastated by the recent flooding from Tropical Storm Fred. And I worry about the people who were affected by that. I worry about the people who lost their homes, about the weather getting colder, although you wouldn't think it's colder sitting out this morning. I worry about winter coming. There are all sorts of things to worry about. I once heard someone say, if you're not worried about something, you're not paying attention to the world around you. (laughs) And I think there is some truth to that. If you're not worried about something, then you're not fully paying attention to what's going on around you. And yet, Jesus spoke these words. 
do not worry about your life. Do not worry about tomorrow. Today's trouble is enough for today. Worry becomes an issue and can become an issue when it overcomes our life. Worry becomes an issue when it does make us lose too much sleep. Worry becomes an issue when it keeps us from focusing on the day that's given to us, on the present, on the moments that God places in our lives. You know, in another scripture, there, Jesus tells the story about visiting with Mary and Martha, the two sisters. And you know the story. Mary comes and she sits at the feet of Jesus and listens to him. And Martha is scurrying all about getting the things, wor- getting the things ready for Jesus. And she, Martha goes to Jesus and says, Jesus, tell my sister to help me. And Jesus says, Martha, Martha. You are worried and distracted about so many things, but you have missed the most important thing. I wonder how many times I miss out on the most important thing because because I am worried and distracted by things that aren't so important. I wonder how many times all of us miss out on the most important things because we are worried and distracted by things that aren't so important. I know some people will read this scripture and think, well, Jesus is telling us not to worry, not to worry about food or clothing. And it's easy to say that to people who have food and clothing. It's not so easy when there are people who lack those things. But just prior to these words, Jesus speaks about not worrying. He's talking to the disciples about where their treasure is. And he's telling them that you can't serve money and serve God at the same time. So when you put our scripture about do not worry in that context, really what Jesus is telling us is to keep our focus on what's important. Jesus is reminding us not to serve and worry about material things, but to serve God. He's reminding us that our focus should always be first and foremost on him and everything else will fall into place. Do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Our heavenly father knows our needs And if we focus on that, if we focus on God first, then the rest will fall into place. You know, we've been talking a lot about wanting to get back to normal. And believe me, I do too. I want to get back to normal. But what is normal anyway? Normal, for me, is worrying. And I would love to not get back to that. Instead, what if we strive for focusing on God and allowing the rest to fall into place? Amen. As we continue to worship God this morning, we do so through the giving of our tithes and our offerings. For those that are here in person, there is the box on the table where we can place our tithes and offerings. And those worshiping online, you can continue to give through our website and through text message. 
thank you all for your continued uh, faithfulness in your giving. And know that your financial gifts are going towards making a difference in our community. To feeding volunteers who are helping with flood recovery. And towards hopefully getting us back together in ways that are safe so that we can grow in our faith and our love and our knowledge of God and Jesus Christ. I invite you to continue to give with grateful hearts. Thank you. Sometimes it takes a big event, a tragedy, to put things in perspective. Um, I was reading something yesterday that was talking about how letting these motorcycles go by. <laughs> something yesterday about how the events of 9-11 helped to put things in perspective for a lot of people. It makes our problems seem small. The uh, floods and hurricanes of late kind of make some of my problems seem small in comparison. But then I realized and I remembered that 
While our problems might seem small in comparison to others, they are big to us. And every prayer request, every struggle that we go through matters to God. So as we prepare our hearts to go to God in prayer, I encourage you and remind you that nothing, no prayer request, no need is too small or too big for our Savior who loves us and wants nothing but the best for us. I invite you, if you're here, to uh, turn with me to your, our prayer requests on the back of our bulletins. This same list is sent out every week in our church email. If you are not receiving that weekly email, if you'll let us know, we can make sure that you're on that list. You'll see the names that are listed there. If you have a prayer request or a praise that you'd like to add to our list, I encourage you to reach out to us in the church office, or you can text or email me, and I'll make sure that that gets added on. Will you bow your heads with me as we go to God in prayer? Gracious and loving God, you have formed us in, our, in your image and you have called us good. As the prophet said, you know every hair on our heads. You know us so intimately. You know the things that worry us, the things that cause us to lose sleep, the things that bog us down and keep us from living the life that you have desired for us. And God, we thank you that you hear our, our prayers, that no prayer is too big or too small for you. God, we pray that you would continue to remind us of your love and your presence. That in the midst of all the concerns we have, we would seek you that we would trust in your love and your care for us. And Lord, we lift up to you our prayer concerns, asking that you would especially be with those who are mourning the loss of loved ones. We know that grief comes and goes, and we pray for those for whom it is especially strong today. Lord, we lift up to you all of those that we know are sick, those who are in the hospital, those who struggle with ongoing physical uh, ailments. Lord, we pray your healing touch to be upon them. Pour out your spirit on us, God. Help us, Lord, to remember that you have called us to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. To sacrifice of ourselves for the well-being of others. Help us, Lord, to continue to do that. To give what we can, to offer what we can to each other and to our community and to our world. Help us, Lord, to know you are with us. We ask these things in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and glory forever. Amen. I invite you to stand as we sing together our closing hymn, Come and Find the Quiet Center. Will you stand with me?
If you are worried by many things, my hope and my prayer is that you would find that quiet center, that you would remember that we love and serve a God who loves us deeply, who desires that we would live a life focused on him. Let us go now in peace to love and serve God as we love and serve each other. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.